Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExilAutomation.com and welcome to part 11 of our API testing with REST Assured and Cucumber course. And in this video I'll be talking about creating authentication service for JSON server for REST Assured testing. So we have been working with REST Assured using our fake JSON server and we have discussed so many options like put, get, post and delete options but we have not really talked about authentication because our fake JSON server that we got actually did not support the authentication mechanism in there. And this time we are going to be extending our JSON server by adding a middleware so that it can support the authentication service as well as you can see in here. So I have added a few codes. I probably wrote a few lines of code to write a JSON server. As you can see, I have created a router and then I have read some of the users and then I use the same db.json file that we had before and then we created a secret key and the secret key actually creates a token and it also verifies a token if we pass one and then it creates the authentication mechanism for our application. So this is kind of very very simple JSON authentication server and we'll be using this JSON server with the number of users that we got. And once again the users are something as you can see in here that's again sitting in a JSON file. As you can see, I have a user like Karthik with an email ID and this is the password and there is a, a name uh, called Prashant and this is the email ID and that's the password. So that's the users that I got. So you can use any one of the user in here. You can pass to the body for the authentication and then you can get access to the rest of the operation that we can perform within the JSON server. So this time we are going to be executing our JSON server a little bit different. Instead of running the JSON server hyphen space dot db, this time we're going to be running using npm run start auth. So the start auth is the code that I'm looking for. So this is going to run our server. And once the server is running, it will show you a message saying running the authentication JSON API server for you, right? And once it is executed, you can then start calling the authentication API, something like this, that it has the authentication by passing the body, like email and password, and you can pass the email that's represented in our JSON file. And if the email is wrong or the password is wrong, it's going to give you a status message like 401, and there is a message like incorrect email or password. So you should be using the correct email and password. So once you give it, it's going to return you a bearer token and then you can use the token as an header for the rest of the operation to gain access to the rest of the operations like get, post, delete and put. So we'll be using everything starting this video for our authentication and see how things work. So let's quickly see our fake JSON server in action and understand how we can leverage the power of fake JSON server in our next video to perform post, get, delete and put operation. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio Code. Alright, so as you can see here, this is our uh, JSON folder that we were using pretty long time before. And these are some of the files that I have created. And if I open this with Visual Studio Code, you can see we can quickly explore what these files are actually. So you can see that we have users.json file. So these are the users that I have got. And there is this db.json file. This is the db.json file that we have been using so long in our course and these are the posts that we created in our previous videos until our last video. And there is one more file which probably I don't see in here. So this one, the server.js file. So if I open this, probably as you can see it is like a potentially uh, a JS file. So opening this is always uh, going to be a tricky. So Windows is not allowing us to open that. But I have opened that in the code writer and you can see this is the file which is responsible for performing the JSON web token, JSON server, body parser, and file system. So the, using file system, we can read the file as you can see in here. And then this is the token creation. This is the verify token. And this is the authentication. And this is the URL which is going to be used for logging in. And then we can then perform the login operation. So I will quickly walk you through the application so that we can have a clear understanding of what it does. So as you can see in the slide, we use this particular post. So before that, we need to start the server. So I have stopped our previous server. 
and then I'm gonna start the npm run start auth and then I'm gonna hit enter and you can see that it is gonna run our uh, JSON server and now if I want to perform a post operation using uh, let's say one to three and if I try to send it you can see that it is saying that incorrect email or password so I'm just going to replace this to the correct password and then if I send it oops it seems like it is not working so let me see what are the user that I have got it's haha123 and cartmcat at gmail.com okay so it's like email.com so gmail.com and if I send you can see that it's generating me an access token so this is the access token that I really require for performing the rest of operation so for instance if I want to perform the get operation that we were doing before or maybe the put operation so let's say I want to do a get operation of post of seven so as you can see there is a bearer token so let me delete it because this token is something I'm not going to be using as of now and if I send it you can see that it's going to show me a message that error in authentication format so if I put an authentication and I add a bearer and the token that I have copied from there and if I send it it's gonna show me the post of seven so this means that it really requires a authentication and a bearer token so without this bearer token we could able to retrieve in our previous videos at least until our last video but starting this video we really require a bearer token and only then we can perform an authentication and then we can get all the value out from it so this is very very important right now so for any operation that we can be performing we need to have this bearer token moving forward from this video so without the bearer token the operation cannot be done so we are going to be changing our code a little bit to handle the bearer token and from our next video we'll see how we can efficiently do that in much simpler fashion with a few code change here and there and you can see that every code that we have written so far until our last video will start working fine without any problem so that's it guys this is how we can work with our fake json server with the authentication mechanism and we'll also start using it from our next video once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day